All right, my brothers and sisters, I have one more study for you today, um, um, May 16, 2020. Now, this one is seeking the approval of men or God. Seeking the approval of men or God. Paul said, for do I now persuade men of God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I shall not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brother, that the gospel which was preached to me is not after man. For I neither received it of man, neither was I taught it by the revelation. <clears throat> neither was I taught it, he said, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. Men please us. They seek the approval of man above the approval of God. The rule is human beings have a propensity that welcomes the praise of their fellows. While there may be exception, the rule is very the rule is we enjoy being complimented or honored. They are many adapt their message to their audiences. Uh, men pleasers deliver to their audience and that which will elicit their approval. They have made this their priority. Now the danger is we can easily become intoxicated and consumed by this need. Then crave the praise of men. I can tell you from my personal testimony, I was a man pleaser. I wanted to please men. Uh, all them years that I was in my setting, my Baptist setting, I wanted to please men instead of God. I wanted their approval. Uh, and the next step in this moral digression is to seek human approval as a personal priority. People pleasing, Paul says, is not compatible with being a servant of Christ. What does he mean by that? What do people pleasers look like? Unfortunately, there are some people who claim to labor Christians who are so interested in being respectable that they are willing to give up beliefs that are at the very core of our faith, most especially that Jesus died for our sins, was raised from the dead. Worried that someone might think them uh, backwards or foolish, they seek a place of compromise. People pleasers are willing to sacrifice even those core statements of faith that sound doctrine, even when they go in and look at it for themselves. They refuse it for the sake of respectability and for the approval of men. As far as Paul is concerned, uh, you, can, you can't be a servant of Christ and be willing to take from Scripture what you want and lead the other portions of Scripture that would change the whole course of what you are teaching and preaching. And that's what's happening in the body of Christ today. A lot of them take from Scripture what they want to take and lead the rest. I call it snatching and grabbing Scripture. Now, there is nothing indirect about Paul's approach in chapter 1 here of Galatians. He has already bluntly stated that some of the Galatian saints have forsaken God by following another gospel. Having outlined the false teachings within the church, he hastened to address the, uh, address the problem which the church seemed to have with him. The Judaizers could not attack the gospel Paul preached without attacking him. This they did by an assault on his character. They alleged that Paul had changed, not for the better, but for the worse, and that his message was motivated by a desire to win man's approval rather than God's. Such charges are implied by Paul's statement in verse 10. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I seek to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be a servant of Christ. Now the word uh, now appears first in the Greek text underscoring this emphasis. It stems upon the change in Paul since his conversion. Indeed, it almost begrudges his convergence. The charge, the charge inferred that Paul once sought to please, once sought to please God, but now he only wished to please men. Those are the charges against Paul. Paul focused on this change, which has occurred upon the motive which his opponents are suggesting underlines his gospel. My brothers and sisters, Paul's opponent charged that he had thrown out the requirement which had been historically laid upon Gentile proselyte to, Jude to Judaism. Now he was preaching that Gentiles could be saved apart from Judaism by, by mere faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. They claimed that he acted not out of integrity, not out of necessity, uh, but out of desire to gain easy converts who would be indebted to Paul and who would look upon him with favor. Now, these are the charges they trumping up against Paul. Paul's Judaizing opponents were slandering him and had successfully swayed public opinion against him. The substance of their attack on Paul was twofold. Paul's gospel message was man-made because if it had been from God, it would have included obedience to the law of Moses. It's what they was really upset and angry about. 
And number two, Paul is a people pleaser, meaning that by proclaiming his law-free gospel message, he is essentially telling people what they want to hear. In short, Paul's gospel message is too easy and is designed to be appealing and to, to disobedient sinners, specifically to gain Paul's notoriety. So the issue in question is whether Paul deliberately diluted his message to suit his audience in order to gain status among them. He does turn the tables on his opponents. His conversion was not a change for the worse, but a change for the better. It was not that he had begun to be a man pleaser since his conversion, but that he had ceased to be so. As a zealous Pharisee, he was a man pleaser. He, he had not, had he had not been converted, he would still be a man pleaser. In verses 11 and 12, Paul gives a general answer in his own defense. For I, I would have you to know, brethren, that the gospel which was preached by me is not according to man. For I neither received it from man, nor was I taught it, but I received it through a revelation of Jesus Christ. Paul's motive, according to the Judas, Judas were human. They claimed that he desired more to please men than to please God. Furthermore, they charged that his, the divine message had been corrupted by Paul's fallen humanity. Paul insisted that nothing could be further from the truth. My brothers and sisters, the details of his conversion and growth as a Christian and apostle refute the charge that he was a man pleaser. What he learned about the gospel, he learned apart from men, verses 11 and 12 of Galatians 1. No one could claim more independence from human contamination of the gospel than Apostle Paul. Paul expound, my brothers and sisters, Paul expound on his argument by more specific examples from his experiences. His conversion, Galatians 1, 13 through 17, his relationship to the apostles in Jerusalem, Galatians 1, 18, uh, 2 and 10, and and. And number three, his confrontation of Peter, Galatians 2, 11 through 21. Ephesians 6, 5 through 9 says, Servants, be obedient to them that are your masters according to the flesh, with fear and trembling, and singleness of heart, of your heart, and as unto Christ, not with our service, as men pleases, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart, with good will doing, doing service as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatsoever good thing any man doeth, the same shall be received of the Lord, whether it be bond or free, and you master do the same unto them, forbearing, threatening, knowing that your master is also in heaven, your master also in heaven, neither is there respect of persons with him. If we want to be plain spoken and unconcerned with pleasing men in the Pauline sense, what that means for us that we should be bold, and proclaiming the good news that Jesus has died for our sins, and that he, is, that he was buried, and that he was raised from the dead for our salvation. When sound doctrine is not the desire of the heart, audience will heap up for themselves teachers, and men, please, will heap up for themselves a following. You read 2 Timothy 4, 1 through 5. Read those verses. This craving to please an audience can quickly lead to danger among saints in the body of Christ, it conveys nothing substantial, my brothers and sisters, or scripture, only sentiment. There are men teaching error of divorce and remarriage because they want to please the world. They found a way to teach it, twist it, and spin it to make it as easy as the world expects. God required preachers to convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. This duty is neglected by men pleasers in situations where such wouldn't be welcome. It is one thing to speak the truth in love, Ephesians 4, 15, but to speak without truth is not loving, even if praised and applauded by men. There's an exhibition of this. When preachers step so delicately, they trample over truth to keep people happy. An honest reading of First and Second Timothy and Titus, uh, and reading Titus can bring us to a better understanding of real preaching and supply both motive and method to avoid the immature, uh, frenzy work to gain the good esteem of men, leaving truth unspoken and sinners lost. 
my brothers and sisters. Preachers who are running for office, seeking trophies from men, building an image, leading the movement, proving their soundness by campaign or otherwise ill-motivated will, wind up withholding need, needed truth or twisting scriptures. The response by faithful brethren should be to use every legitimate mean to stop the mouth of vain talkers. Titus 1, 9 through 13. And every preacher needs to ask himself the question stated in Galatians 1, 10. Do I seek to please men? Paul responded, for if I still please men, I will not be a servant of Christ. Get the point. The men pleasing Galatians 1, 10 is not a servant of Christ. We should be bold in preaching the word of truth, right? Divided, my brothers and sisters. Are you, are you men pleasers? Or do you please God? My brothers and sisters, only you can answer that question. Do I please men? Or do I please God? For if I still please men, I will not be a servant of Christ. My brothers and sisters, we thank you for this time. We pray right now, Father, that those who listen in, that they will encourage and that they will enlighten and that they will go and study this message, get their Bible, study these scriptures and understand the truth about pleasing God and not men. Thank you for this time. In Jesus name we pray. Amen.